All right, hey, what's up, everybody? Um, so I'm so excited because uh, because of the Camino, I'm going to be going over like the gear I'm going to take and my thought process around all of the gear. And so today I'm going to talk about shoes. All right. So um, now because we know that the Camino to Santiago de Compostela is about 500 miles of walking and uh, the terrain is supposed to be pretty varied, but not pretty rough. Um, the thought process is, well, most people say, well, we're going to go on a hike. So we'll take a, we'll take a hiking boot. And so my original plan was to go with a hiking boot. And so I have these, these are Keens, um, and they're pretty solid hiking boot. Um, they have, uh, they're waterproof. They're waterproof Gore-Tex. Um, they're really nice and sturdy and rugged. They have a great tread on it. Um, I love these boots. They're super roomy, super comfortable, hold my feet really well. Um, I've never had a problem with them. Um, sometimes I have like weak ankles, um, like, I don't know, old basketball injury. <laughs> but um, I sometimes would roll my ankles so I really wanted to have this kind of um, ankle support um, especially because we're going to be climbing the Pyrenees Mountains um, in France like the first stage is going over the Pyrenees Mountains so uh, having like a nice boot like this would be like super solid and um, and I love these boots uh, but one of the problems is, like, these boots, because they're waterproof Gore-Tex, they stink. They, like, smell bad, <laughs> like, inside. And um, I'm afraid that these boots are going to stink, like, super badly over the course of being used every day for 30 days of hiking 20K. And so I'm a little bit worried about that. And so outside of the Pyrenees Mountains, also... The, all the research says that um, it's actually not a very vigorous hike. It's, it's like an easy hike, meaning uh, you're going over like soft dirt trails um, and sometimes even over paved, paved surfaces like in the middle. Um, like even for like a 30 mile stretch, um, you're going over some paved surface. Um, so the next thing was like a trail hiker and that makes a lot of sense i i'm interested in a trail hiker um i so i researched a bunch of different trail hikers and um i looked for some trail hikers with some high um like trail like trail runners trail running shoes and i was looking for trail running shoes that maybe had a mid but um that wasn't waterproof that was like mesh and that brought me to the um the ultra um what are the ultra lone peaks 3.5 mesh mid and that's a discontinued item they don't make it anymore and so i ordered one online and i had tried out like all of the ultra running shoes trail runners um and especially the um lone peaks which have a zero drop on the heel so it's like more like your foot and it has a really wide toe box and I love them I thought that they felt great and so I tried on the I tried on the boot um and uh it fit great at a 10 and a half and so I ordered it online the 3.5s which were discontinued anyways the 3.5s got shipped to me and they were too small. It was like too tight. So apparently um, the, the size changed over um, between the 3.5 and the 4.0 on the mids between the mesh and then like the Gore-Tex. So then I had to return those. So then I was off looking for a different trail runner. I thought, well, <coughs> excuse me, let me look at every kind of trail runner there is. And then I started um, looking at these Hoka, Hoka One One shoes, and um, I fell in love with the Hoka One Ones. Um, they're awesome. They're like really uh, thick uh, soled, and um, they're super comfortable and really light. And so I tried on all of the Hoka One One shoes, and then I settled on not a trail runner, but like a, re a pure runner. 
stable shoe, which is the Gaviota 2. Now, this is the second rendition of the Gaviotas. They, are, they are come in this black and white, which looks super nice, actually, um, because Hoka One One has these awesome, like, different colors and stuff, and it's pretty wild. But these ones are just, like, black and white. And if you check this out, um, it has this J um, right here, the J, which is a stabilizer. So I couldn't find a, a trail runner that had good ankle support, but I kind of, I have a little bit of a flat foot and I tend to over pronate. And so this is supposed to protect you from like over pronating too much so that I don't hurt my ankles. And so while I can abandon this really heavy boot and go with this super light um, running shoe with a really thick sole and um, has this um, stabilizer on it. So I'm super excited to try this out. Um, I actually went to the gym today to uh, run and do some workouts with the shoes and then I got to the gym and um, the power was out so I actually couldn't use it. So I'm excited to try this out um, and see how it all holds up. I also got these um, custom insoles made because one of the things about the Camino is you want to protect your feet because, um, well, I always say you only got two feet. Those are the only two feet you're going to have for the rest of your life. So you got to take care of them. And so I bought these custom insoles from Roadrunner. Um, I checked out a bunch of different like gel insoles and, um, and then I settled on these because these are custom made for my feet uh, because I wanted to make sure that... Um, that my foot's going to be taken care of over um, 800 kilometers or 500 miles to make sure that um, I'm doing everything that I can to protect my feet. The one thing that I don't want is that I want to, I don't want to roll my ankle. I don't want to get blisters um, and I want to not notice my feet at all. I just want to be floating as I'm walking. So I'm super excited about these Hoka One One Gaviota 2s. And um, I tried the Speed Goat 3s, and I loved them. I thought I was going to buy them, but then I saw these are more more stable. And um, I know it doesn't have, like, the same lugs for a, um, like, a, like a trail runner, but I'm just going to be confident that um, the stabilization is going to pay off for me. Lots of the forums say uh, the Bondi 6s are great. Um, which are not trail runners either, but they have enough traction to get you all the way to Santiago and more. So I'm going to trust what people are saying about the Bondi 6s and equate it to these Gaviota 2s and say, I think um, just a regular, really well-supported running shoe that's stable and, um, and uh, well-constructed and has this kind of very good ventilation uh, is going to carry me all the way. So I'm planning to get some, uh, well, I'm going to use some wool socks with it. I'll probably do another video where we're looking at the socks. I have like lots of different kinds of wool socks, but um, the wool socks that I'm going to be planning to wear. So I'm going to take a couple test runs with this, with my custom insoles um, on my new Gaviota 2s, and we'll see how it goes. So I'll report back. If anything, I can always fall back to these, but... You know, these are really heavy. They might be overkill for what we're doing um, for the Camino. Um, I hate to leave these behind because I love them, but I'm trying to go ultra light or as close to ultra light as possible. So packing very little, going really light. And so I'm excited for these and um, we'll report back in when we have a chance after I give them a couple test runs. So hopefully that's gonna be great. So thanks for checking out today's installment of Camino Gear uh, with Called Rise. Peace.